What's up tech fam? It's been a while since I've done one of these, so let me show you how I have my phone set up and what apps I mainly use on a daily basis. So first up, the home screen. Now being a tech reviewer, I go through a fair amount of phones, so I don't typically spend a lot of time customizing a look and style. Uh, instead, I recreate the same functional setup on every new phone I'm reviewing. So in order to keep that setup consistent across new devices, uh, I use Nova Launcher and then back up my layout and settings to the cloud so that once all my apps have been restored to a new phone using Android's built-in backup and restore system, I can just go into Nova Launcher settings and then restore my setup from the backup in my Google Drive. It's really helpful and a huge time saver. So I usually keep it to one home screen, but starting with the wallpaper I'm using now, it's actually a static slash live wallpaper hybrid called Material Island, where the time of day changes according to your time zone. Uh, there's a bunch of different cool looking islands to choose from, and I guess I just really like the minimalistic artwork. It's also free, so that helps too. So Safe and Cloud is my password manager of choice. Um, you know how over time you've signed up for so many goddamn stupid websites and services while only using like 10% of them, but still want access to the other 90% at one time or another? Yeah, well that's why I use Safe and Cloud. I absolutely love it. It's well polished, supports multiple cloud storage services, it's really easy to use, and it just keeps getting better year after year. So next is my Ring app for my Ring Video Pro doorbell, which I love by the way. Um, it allows me to answer the door without actually answering the door while I'm in my boxers covered in Doritos dust yelling at door-to-door -door Bible thumpers to beat it, or most importantly spying on my neighbors while they're outside without them knowing on it. It's great. Then I've got four folders, my Google folder, with with Google Apps that I use all the time, like Maps. I mean, I get lost all the time. Worst sense of direction ever. Uh, I probably shouldn't have dropped out of Scouts to chase girls. Actually, on second thought, I stand by my original decision. My YouTube folder is a pit of procrastination where I'm either being good and replying to video comments or I've slipped down the rabbit hole on the weird side of YouTube. Now my media folder has all the essentials, but Set, otherwise known as Set TV, is a new addition and actually the sponsor of this video. So let me be the first to tell you, like sincerely, not just because I'm making bank. The Set TV app is the cable cutter's best friend. Now I haven't been a cable subscriber for like many years now. Uh, I just stream or download everything I watch, but sometimes I run out of things to watch, which is right about when I start missing how easy it was to just turn on the TV and start channel surfing. So that's why Set TV has now entered my life. Uh, it's 20 bucks a month and you get access to over 500 live channels in HD and there's an app for Android phones and tablets as well as a version for devices like Android TV boxes and even Amazon Fire Sticks if you use one of those. Now there's an app for Windows touchscreen devices too, but there's also a new option to watch from any browser anywhere you are, which is pretty awesome. And there's tons of premium channels in there too. Like they've got it all covered, HBO, Sci-Fi, Cinemax. Like just look on their site, they list them all. It's pretty crazy. It's just like having a premium tier cable subscription really. Oh, and sports channels? Yeah, they got all of those too. Like all of them, even the pay-per-view ones, except you know, they're free. Pretty dope. Oh, and we can't forget about the sexy time channels. They got those too. So you can either launch straight into watching live TV and then start channel surfing, or you can use the program guide and swipe from left to right to see what's airing next. And there's even an option called catch up, which is essentially like a DVR function. Um, unfortunately, they're still setting it up, but I was told it should be ready within the next 30 days or sooner, which will be extra super dope. There's even a video on demand option, so you can watch pre-aired TV shows or even rifle through their huge library of both new and older movies. Guys, for only 20 bucks a month, it doesn't get much better than this, especially compared to what the cable companies charge for the same offerings. Anyways, they've got a free three-day trial, which I'll have a link to in the description below, so try it out. You don't really have anything to lose. Now, moving on from there, I only use the Amazon video app for browsing, because browsing on my Smart TV Amazon app is super duper slow. Um, and then there's Upflix. If you love Netflix, you'll love Upflix. Uh, it keeps a running list of every show or movie that Netflix has added to your region's Netflix library filtered by date. It's really, really useful and it's free. And for music, at the moment I'm using Google Play Music because it stores my entire music collection and SoundCloud for discovering new music from artists I've never heard of before. And then the last folder is my social media folder, which has all the usual suspects. 
except Snapchat. I don't use Snapchat. I do prefer Google Hangouts as my messaging app of choice. And then for my email app of choice, I use Google Inbox because I find it much easier for me to keep things organized. But I'm always looking for a cross-platform desktop and mobile app for email. So let me know in the comments if you have any good suggestions. And then moving randomly through all my less frequently used apps that I stash in the app drawer, 17 Track and the Canada Post app are two apps I use while frothing at the mouth waiting for new tech to show up. Uh, there's my Almond app for being able to play with settings and see new devices connected to my Almond 3 routers. And I've got the Amazon Shopping app, which I really only use to do price comparisons while I'm actually in a store. Um, Android Pay, which I never use for some reason. And the Android Wear app, only because Pushbullet needs it so that it can reply to messages from other messaging apps from your computer. It's great for never missing a dirty message from my wife ever again. And I guess that brings me to Push Bullet. Now, Push Bullet lets you send files, uh, links, messages between pretty much every major mobile and desktop OS, as well as every major browser. Folks, it's quite simply the bee's knees, the dog's bullocks, the lady's knickers, the... Anyways, what's next? Oh yeah, the camera app. Yeah, I prefer using a stock default camera app on any given phone, but if I need some manual controls on a phone that doesn't have any, I will honestly download whatever the top manual camera control app uh, on the Play Store is at the time. So maybe there's another app you guys can recommend for me. Uh, what's the best manual control camera app you know of? Now I've still got the Dream Screen app going, but I don't use it much because I watch content through my smart TV apps, like I mentioned my review. So I just keep the ambient light setting on and leave it like that. Gboard, right. Uh, I like Google's Gboard keyboard app. SwiftKey used to be my favorite, but then Gboard showed up on the block and was all like, nah, fool, this out of shape paper white Jew here. He's mine, and SwiftKey was all like, "I right, homie. So the Philips Hue app, uh, about that. So I got sent a shitload of Gen 3 Philips Hue RGB bulbs to use in a smart home video I'm planning, so that's why that's there. Uh, Pi is another social media tool that helps online influencers, but I pretty much never use it, but I really should. Uh, Reddit, I only use like once a year because the users there kind of scare the shit out of me. Google Rewards, because once every three years, I actually get a goddamn random survey and once I finally save it up enough, I can buy one free app. It's great. And I like Snapseed as my mobile photo editor of choice. Uh, it's one of those apps that I'm more comfortable with than its competitors, but I only use like once a month or less. Now, I like having the speedtest.net app on my phone for when my Wi-Fi is feeling laggy or checking to see if a hotel or friend's Wi-Fi is capable enough for my needs. Video games and porn can use a lot of bandwidth, so it's a handy app. So I keep Spotify on pretty much most of my phones, but I leave it out of my home screen folder because I only use it like twice a year. It's it's a good service if you pay for the subscription, but the free version sucks moose nuts thanks to those insanely annoying ads. There's the Starbucks app, cause hey, I like Starbucks and I like earning points for more free Starbucks. And lastly, for you lucky few who hung around long enough, you'll absolutely love this app. Temp mail. Uh, okay, so you know how sometimes you're forced to sign up to view content on like a blog or for a service or something that you'll only ever use or visit maybe once? Well, temp mail creates disposable or otherwise known as burner email accounts for you and lets you manage and access them all from inside the app itself. It takes literally seconds to create a burner email account and you can keep it for as long as you want and delete it easily whenever you want. Whew. Well, I think that about does it for this one. That took way longer than I thought. Big shout out to Set TV for sponsoring this video and don't don't forget to hit up the link in the description below for a free three-day trial. Uh, I'll have links to all of the notable apps in the description below. I'm sure you can find apps like Netflix and SoundCloud on your own. If you liked the video, show me some love with that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week. But thanks as always for watching, and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers.